Welcome to an EMA product overview today, Densify. Andrew, you are CTO at Densify. Um, is it fair to say and to position Densify as an optimization service for hybrid cloud containers and everything else that the future will basically throw at the enterprise to get the most out of those technologies, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it really what we're about is, is is analytics that look at supply and demand and really optimize it in, in a lot of scenarios. And if you look at what we're focused on, of course, right now, um, is things like public cloud, like using predictive analytics to understand how to drive right. your cloud bill down, how to optimize bare metal, virtual environments, right. image containers, of course, a lot of focus. And the idea is that it, should, it makes the applications um, run better and on less infrastructure or, or less cloud. Um, and, and a really important part of, of Densify is that it's a pretty unique service in that um, it's a combination of this big analytics brain that runs in the sky. Mm -hmm. So it does a very deep an analysis, but it's very easy to use because you just take 15 minutes and plug into it and mm -hmm. it crunches on your data. And it's, it's combined, that, that brain is combined with a human element in our identification advisor. So we have experts that know how to use the analytics to drive outcomes. And they work with different customers on driving the strategic level, what is going to work best for you. So yeah, the, the, the main point here is that it's very easy to adopt. You don't have to learn a product or read manuals. You just sign up and you get the outcomes. And we think that's really where everybody wants to go. Nobody wants to learn another product. They just want to move on and focus on, on what they need to get done. So customers, enterprises, their biggest pain point today is uh, that Amazon builds, Azure builds, public cloud bills in general, they are higher than they expect. And uh, that is because they don't understand the, the workload, right? They don't understand the uh, terms and conditions of that cloud. They, uh, they don't know how the workload will behave, what it exactly needs, in which situation, Andrew, right? That's, I think, the crux of it. It's much more than just reading the specs, reading the requirements of a workload and uh, taking a look at the cloud pricing sheet. Sure, yeah. A lot of people, when they get that Amazon bill that's way bigger than they thought it should be, they, they rush out to buy something that will read the bill. And that's a logical thing to do. And, and we do that too. We, we, we have a part of our product that will analyze the bill for you. Mm -hmm. But that's not where you really save the money. That just lets you understand what happened. Right, right. Um, when you look at saving money, one of the first steps is to make sure that your cloud instances are all the right size, that you're buying the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we do a very detailed analysis telling you whether things are too big or too small or if they're just right. And then, of course, how to change them to make them better. And even for the things that, are, that look okay, a lot of times we're finding that there are other instances that are better. There are newer ones. You're on an M3, but now there's an M4 and it's cheaper. Yeah. Um, so we see that all the time where, um, you know, either, either recommending purely to modernize an instance or when you make that smaller, also move it to a different class. Right. And that's actually quite difficult to do. It requires pretty detailed analytics, uh, but the savings are pretty big. So we find that... Um, the ability to go that extra step and do the deeper analytics to recommend cross-class uh, changes um, often gives you 36, 38% savings, yeah. whereas you might only get 15 or 20 by doing basic sizing. So we think this is pretty important that reading the bill, great. The next step is very quickly understanding what pragmatic changes can I make to drive that bill down. And when you sign up for our service, you'll get this answer very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. It just pops out of the analytics and right. you can act on it right away. And the next step then really is to compare where you currently are to other deployment options, right? Uh, I'm at AWS, maybe I should go back to my data center to vSphere, maybe I should go to Azure, maybe I could uh, I could go somewhere third where it's cheaper, right? But again, that's not a simple decision for an enterprise with an, with an application that is business critical. You need to understand uh, the dependencies uh, in terms of uh, performance, but also in terms of cost, right? The data transfer that you have to do, uh, maybe there's Another application that depends on your, your database that then you have to shovel the data back and forth and, and you pay for that. So there's a lot of pitfalls, Andrew, right? That where well, I can't just say, oh, yeah, my, my intern said that I should go to AWS and uh, let's do it. You know, he calculated back of the envelope in the spreadsheet that I'd say 40%. It's, it's a lot more than that. Yeah, absolutely. I like to joke that it's not really a place where opinions should come in. It's all about science. And in our view, um, if you run, if you crunch the numbers and the analytics, you'll, you'll get the answer. So, so one of the things that we're also very good at doing, we have the, the, the features that will allow you to do cloud migration analysis that will analyze workloads and tell you what cloud they should go in. And you can use that for your on-prem workloads or stuff already in the cloud. It's, it's all normalized to benchmarks. 
So you can use it either way. So maybe you're already in one cloud provider. It's much cheaper to go to another. Um, and you can do that at, at the individual workload level or at the application level. So for example, uh, here's an example where I have an application that's telling me which provider is actually cheapest based on the actual data, the actual mm -hmm. utilization, the IO, storage, all those details. Um, and we're also seeing here, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, um, that this app can't go to uh, a certain cloud provider. Maybe it's breaking a governance rule. Mm -hmm. Maybe the data needs to stay within the country. Right. So the ability to apply analytics to this, you know, I, it, again, it's not, it's not, it shouldn't be an opinion. Somebody shouldn't say, do you think that app will work in the cloud? The, the analytics will tell you definitively mm -hmm. whether it will work in the cloud and which provider is best to, to use. So that's, that's, you know, again, if you sign up and you just deploy the service, or if you sign up for the service and it queues on the data, it will just start telling you this very quickly. You pick your own cost risk profile, right? You may choose to say, okay, I'm going to run this application cheaper, but then you at least make the conscious decision of saying, okay, if that goes wrong, or if sometimes my mobile app is slower, you know, I, I that's okay for me, right? I'm paying 30% less, I can live with that. You're not getting surprised by this. Your intern doesn't just tell that to you and you expect you get the same just for less money. And uh, yeah, that, exactly. it's, all about, it's all about codification, Torsten, in my mind. Like what you want to do is basically codify what you intend to do and then go forward based on, on those marching orders. I think that's very important because, right. um, the, the, you know, people say, well, we're moving to the cloud. Well, maybe that, that may be an end in its, its own right, or maybe the goal is really is to, to find the lowest cost alternative or, or whatever the case is, because we see a lot of customers saying, well, maybe that app shouldn't go in the cloud. I want to be able to prove it should stay on-prem. Hmm. Uh, and and that, that, that comes up quite a bit. So, so for example, if I show you an analysis of this, this is an actual set of workloads already in the cloud, in Amazon in this case, mm -hmm. um, cost you know, just, just under 110,000 a month. Um, if I pull them back on-prem, um, the, all the gear needed to run it on-prem, all the compute gear, is paid for by every three months of spend in Amazon. So this tends to raise some eyebrows. Um, so when people say, we've got to move to the cloud, that's the goal. Well, yes, that, that, that could be the goal, or is that really your goal, or is your goal to run it in the lowest cost way possible? Right. Um, sometimes when you run the numbers, um, and you run it in a virtual environment on-prem, and you can stack the workloads, you know, the, the economics uh, uh, might be pretty good if you do it properly. So mm. there's all kinds of options. And again, our goal is just to bring science uh, to make it easy to understand how your workloads look in different options and, and how to optimize. And where we need even more, more science is uh, today's popular topic of containers. 68% of enterprises are exploring the use of containers today. Uh, some of them are even putting them into production at a limited scope. But uh, it's, it's so much more complex even than moving something to the public cloud because the target is a different one, right? It's much more granular and it can all, it's much more uh, uh, portable and mobile as well, right? You can uh, do a lot of things with containers that you cannot do with uh, virtual machines. So, uh, you know, it's all a lot more dynamic. It's almost like, you know, like a Terminator. You can flow together in a certain shape and form and uh, um, you have your perfect, uh, you have your perfect uh, application environment, but to be able to do that it needs a lot of skill and needs a lot of transparency and insights and, and knowledge, right? Absolutely, and, and we would argue it needs a lot of analytics because there's so many moving parts. Right. Um, you, you can't really do it on a napkin anymore. And, and so, I, you know, containers are, are, are fantastic. We think they're a, a huge technology. They're, they're, there needs to be some uh, maturation around some aspects of it as far as bringing them into production. And that's you know, one of the things that we, we tend to focus on mm. um, and you know, actually use them for production workloads. But it's, it's really quite wonderful what they allow you to do in terms of efficiency and cost because, um, because like you mentioned, they, 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 they're more granular, they're more flexible, and they act effectively as a hypervisor. So I can't run uh, mm. a hypervisor inside an Amazon instance, but I can run Docker containers. Nice. And so that actually has a huge impact on efficiency. Um, and if you look at, at you know, the, the, this analysis we did um, to, to kind of showcase that, we took a, just under a thousand real workloads and said, if we put them in Amazon fully optimized, so we really, really precisely size the Amazon small, medium and large instances to host them, um, these 983 workloads cost about 1.9 million a year. And so that's, that's, you know, that's one side of the equation. Now, we also said, what if we took them, and what if they were running in Docker on very large Amazon X1s, mm. those really giant instances. 
And it turns out that if we properly stack them using the analytics, applying our analytics engine, the, the brain, mm -hmm. um, we could fit all of them in four X1s mm -hmm. for about an 80% yeah. cost difference. So I think this is really, really important. This means that when I'm using public cloud, rather than buying small items of capacity, um, I can actually dovetail workloads and save a ton of money. Yeah. And so along with all the other benefits you mentioned of containers and their agility and all that stuff, they are a big efficiency mechanism. And, and these are the kinds of analytics that, that are available through Decify. Again, it's very easy to get access to this and to see these kinds of answers very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that is a fascinating piece about uh, uh, containers, right? And Densify helps you achieve that piece that you can actually mix workloads now. You can mix applications in the same environment. And that gives you, by definition, a lot more efficiency. Before, you were separating out your environments because you didn't really, you didn't really with VMs have that, that ability to say, yeah, I'm, I'm having multiple different applications in, in the same farm, right? That's, that's just way too... Uh, too complex and, uh, and it also doesn't really work with, with virtual machines. Uh, but with containers, you can do it. However, to do it effectively, you need uh, extensive analytics and you need to be able to think uh, three, four, or five steps ahead uh, so that you don't do something that uh, will get you in a lot of trouble later. Thank you, Andrew. Um, this was another episode of EMA Product Reviews. Mm -hmm.